Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth session in American English Live Series 12. We're so excited that each of you are here with us today. My name is Kate, and I'll be with you along with my colleague behind the scenes, Amanda, who will be serving as moderator to help answer your questions and respond to your comments during the session. Let's begin today with these wonderful comments from our previous webinar, Integrating STEAM and English with Oral Language Routine. So Irma in Honduras says, STEAM is a brand new term for me. This webinar will be extremely helpful for me as a teacher trainer to guide students to teach English and the subject matters using the presenter's strategies and techniques. Thank you for that wonderful comment, Irma. And Laura Donna in Romania says, I love integrating STEM into my classes. It sparks interest, connects the dots between real life and abstract notions and specific vocabulary. Amazing ideas. Thank you so much for the insight and the extremely well-organized presentation. Catherine in the Philippines says, it's amazing that STEAM can be integrated with English and thereby hit the 21st century skills. I will soon include this way of thinking in our modules. Thank you for this fruitful webinar. Awesome, thank you for those wonderful comments. And as you know, we love to see our teacher participants actively engaged in professional development. So please continue to share your photos and thoughts about our webinars by adding to the comments or chat box or by emailing them to American English Webinars at FHI360.org. We may feature one of your comments or photos during the next series. So throughout series 12, we've been exploring the themes of English for specific purposes, tourism and cultural exploration, 21st century skills and the English language classroom, and teaching STEAM to English language learners. We hope you've been able to use the practical ideas we've shared and will be able to use the, uh, what we share in the last two webinars of our series. So here's what to expect today. This session is about 60 minutes long. The presenter will present the material and I, as your host, will ask questions and make comments too. But we really hope to hear from you, our audience, so that we can address your ideas and experiences. Please do share your thoughts and comments in the comments feature or chat box. When our session comes to a close, you will have an opportunity to receive a digital badge for your participation. At the end of the webinar, we'll share a link in the comments. Click on that link and complete a short quiz about today's session. You must answer two out of three multiple choice questions correctly. And once you've successfully done so, you should expect to receive your badge via email within about a week. And before we begin, I want to encourage you to check out the latest English Teaching Forum issue, volume 59, number three, to learn strategies for implementing humor instruction in English language teaching, practicing stress and intonation, developing learners discussion and tutorial leadership skills, engaging beginning students online and much more. Visit the link here on the screen and in the comments or chat to view this edition of English Teaching Forum. And as you can see, this volume is number 59. That means we've been uh, publishing English Teaching Forum here in the Office of English Language Programs for 59 years. That means that in 2022, we're going to be celebrating our 60th anniversary. So please do stay tuned for some wonderful events and content coming in 2022. And now for today's session, getting started with project-based learning in STEAM. Project-based learning or PBL has many benefits for STEAM instruction. PBL incorporates opportunities for meaningful language use across the four skills, as well as the acquisition of subject-specific language. Language educators, however, often wonder how to create projects tailored to the content and language needs of English language learners. This webinar is for English as a foreign language teachers who want to align their STEAM instruction with the acquisition of 21st century skills while simultaneously supporting students' language development. Participants will be able to identify the characteristics of strong projects in STEAM courses, explore a framework for developing clear language objections Object, objectives for PBL, and analyze sample projects. And now we are pleased to introduce our, pre our presenters, Catherine DeFelice-Box and Anne Pomerantz. Catherine 
DeFelice Box has over 20 years of experience in teacher education. Her research focuses on teacher-student communication in multilingual classrooms and on the teacher mentoring process for those who plan to work in linguistically diverse schools. Catherine holds an ed, a doctorate of education and a master's of education in applied linguistics from Columbia University. She is currently a lecturer in educational practice at the University of Pennsylvania Graduate School of Education. Anne Pomerantz is an applied linguist and language educator. For over 20 years, she has helped ESL specialists, world language instructors, K-12 teachers, and university faculty to engage in teaching practices that support multilingual students' language development. Her research focuses on how people communicate in multilingual classrooms and communities. Anne holds a PhD in educational linguistics and a master's of science in ed and TESOL from the University of Pennsylvania, where she is currently a professor of practice. Throughout today's session, Catherine and Anne will be doing some role play as they present their information. Welcome, Catherine and Anne. We're so happy to have you here with us today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Kate. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Anne. Hi, Kate. It's so nice to see everybody. So I heard that today's session is on project-based learning in STEAM. That's so cool. I love integrating content related to science, technology, engineering, art, and math into my language courses. Well, that's right. Today, we're going to be talking about getting started with project-based learning in STEAM. So what are we going to be doing? Well, that's a great question, Anne. During this webinar, we will identify characteristics of strong project, uh, projects for STEAM courses. We're going to write at least one objective together for a sample STEAM project that we'll be looking at. And we'll also select one to three appropriate language supports that we can implement during a sample STEAM project that we'll be looking at. Wow, that sounds great. And together, we're going to be de defining project-based learning. We're going to discuss its key characteristics. We're going to take a look at one or two different STEAM projects, the prompts, the different objectives for it, as well as its language supports, and then, of course, we're going to review some tips for using STEAM projects in our English language teaching. Wow, that sounds amazing. I can't wait to get started. So, audience, I have a question for you. What STEAM-themed content do you include in your courses? Are you science? Do you do technology, um, engineering, arts, math? Do you do a combination? Put your STEAM team in the chat, you can put your letter or your word. Yeah, what STEAM do you teach? You can let us know, maybe a combination of many of these different things, or maybe you do units on these topics. What STEAM team are you on? Which of these do you incorporate? So Adnan says general science, awesome. What other things do you incorporate? Technology, Kuang says math, Lu To says arts. Let's see, Xing, Few says art as well. Nahed says math. Abdul Haq says legal things. Interesting. So maybe that would go along with some art. <laughs> Science and math and art craft from Kin. And Teresa says uh, technology. So wonderful. Thanks guys for sharing. Yeah, that's a little bit of everything. That's yeah, terrific. That's great. So Catherine, this workshop is about project-based learning or PBL in STEAM. Why? Can you tell us a little more about what PBL or project-based learning is? Yeah, of course. So first let's compare it a little bit to more traditional approaches to teaching. So in a traditional approach to teaching, as you can see on the slide, there's a teacher in front of the classroom with the students sitting sort of as an audience and he's really imparting his knowledge to the students. In a traditional classroom, teachers often stand in front of the room and they do most of the talking. The students are often listening and taking notes, receiving all the information that is given to them by the teacher. Oh, okay, I get it. Traditional teaching is kind of like banking, right? 
So students are empty vessels, like this empty piggy bank here, and they're kind of just ready to be filled with knowledge from the teacher. Seems like kind of a one-way approach to thinking about teaching, right? I mean, the teacher is the knowledge holder and the teacher is giving that knowledge to the students. So in this banking metaphor, the teacher is really at the center. Right, and project-based learning offers us a fresh alternative approach to the classroom. So instead of the teacher remaining at the center of the room, the teacher sort of serves as a guide on the side for the students who are in charge of their own learning. Rather than the teacher imparting all of the knowledge on passive students with the students quietly taking notes, the students take charge of their learning under the mentorship of the teacher. So the teacher will choose topics that are relevant to the students' daily lives. The teacher then maybe creates projects that are meaningful to the students. And then as the students are doing the projects, they're really taking control of their own learning and participating actively in the classroom. Sometimes they even find things that they teach the teacher themselves. But PBL gives them opportunities to work together to solve real world problems as a class. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is that project-based learning or PBL is a more kind of hands-on student-centered way of engaging with STEAM content. It's a kind of learning by doing. Interesting. Right, so rather than learning about science from the teacher, the students become scientists and test experiments, design experiments and test hypotheses just like real science. Hmm, okay, that's interesting. And rather than learning about math only through teacher lectures, students will actively use their math skills to work through problems that are meaningful to them and propose solutions together. Okay, I see, that sounds really interesting. But what if say I'm a language teacher? I mean, is project-based learning right for me? Well, that's a great question. And a lot of language teachers wonder the same thing. The key is to integrate language teaching with your STEAM content. So the really most important part is that you are using the content and the language to teach both of those things together. It makes for really exciting classes as some of our audience members already know. So let's find out how. Let's dig into PBL a little bit. Take a look at the pictures on the screen. These are people engaged in project-based learning. What do you see in these pictures? What are the students and the teachers doing? Audience, take a minute to think about it and put your answers in the chat. Yeah, let us know everybody. What do you notice about these photos? What are some of the things that you can tell us? Let's see, Adnan says they're collaborating and communicating. Wonderful. Lu Cho also says communicating. Erica says they're discussing and negotiating. Great. What other things can you tell they're doing? Saw Arenosa says you can see enthusiasm. Wonderful. Sir Lin says it looks very student-centered. Chow says it looks like they're drawing. Lasma, discussing. Min says they're doing group work. These are such great responses. Celeste says teamwork. And so does Gilda. She says working as a team. Teamwork and discussion from Ari. And let's see one more. Nahed says they are discovering. Awesome. Wonderful comments, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing to think about what you can see people doing right here in these photos. They're working together, they're collaborating, they're engaging in meaningful interaction, which we know is very important for additional language development. I see people writing, I see people talking, those are listening, those are two really important skills. So I can see a lot going on here. Um, there's just so much potential for meaningful target language use in project-based learning. But Catherine, I have a question. Do all projects in STEAM have this potential? Absolutely, and that's really what we're gonna be talking about today. A good STEAM project for a language classroom provides multiple opportunities to use subject-specific language. There's lots of chances to use new vocabulary words when focused on STEAM content. 
Also, because projects are usually multi-step, there are opportunities to engage in all four skills, reading, writing, speaking, and listening as they complete their projects. As students work, they often have to collaborate with each other, giving them lots of talking time together as they negotiate meaning and use English to work through these content-based solutions. And then finally, in order to set the stage for authentic language use, the teacher needs to make sure that there is a clear STEAM objective so that language can be used as a vehicle for communication. Hmm. So let's look at an example. Imagine your topic is, let's plan a party. On the next slide, you'll see two short project descriptions. So if we're imagining that our topic is planning a party and we're going to design a project around it, we're going to like take a look at two of them and decide which project is a STEAM project. Okay, so let me read the description of project one. It's your friend's birthday. With your group, plan a surprise birthday party. What will the menu be? What activities will you do? Be ready to present your party plan to the class. The best party plan will win a prize. Catherine, will you read the project two description? Yeah, and we'll figure out which one here is a STEAM project. So project two says, it's your friend's birthday. With the group, plan a surprise birthday party. Your shopping list is ready to go. Oh no, you're low on funds. You're gonna to need to look at unit prices to get the best deal on each item. Be ready to share your, share your plan with the class. Okay, so audience, which of these do you think is a STEAM project? Put your answer in the chat. You can write project one or one or project two or just the number two. Um, and then tell us a little bit about why you picked this project. Why project one or why project two? Which one is a STEAM project? All right, yeah, great. Let's see everybody. It looks like a lot of answers are coming in. Um, which one is a STEAM project? And please make sure to tell us why. So we see um, a lot of, I almost wanna say it's about 50-50 that we're seeing ones and twos. Um, let's see, number, uh, Dr. A. Neela says that number two is STEAM because it requires planning with a budget. Great, Miguel says both. Make sure to let us know why. Giab says project two, because many skills will be applied in one activity. Wonderful. Renee Wilson says both could be a STEAM project. Lian Le says number two, because it relates to math. Let's see. Zoe also says two, because it's about math. And so does Saeed says the same thing. All right, looks great, everybody. I want to say it's about 50-50 between project one and project two, and we have a good handful of folks who are saying that this could, uh, that both could be STEAM projects. Thanks for your responses, everybody. So this gives us a great springboard to really start to dig into this. Um, so let's first take a closer look at project one. What happens in the classroom? What might the students say if they were doing this project? Take a moment and read the speech bubbles, which we're imagining are the students and the kind of language they would be engaged in as they were trying to complete this project. So what do you see here? Kate, what do you see? Let's see here. Um, I see people asking questions about what food to serve at the party. Um, they're using party words like dessert and cake. Let's see, I also see people expressing their preferences. One person wants to hire a band, the other one wants to do karaoke. Yeah, so, yeah that's, that's looks kind of fun. <laughs> it does look fun, doesn't it? Thank you so much, Kate. And you're a language teacher, what do you see? I see a lot going on here. I see people using vocabulary related to party planning. That's good, it's relevant to the topic. Um, I see people using their listening and speaking skills in authentic and meaningful ways. One person asked a question about dessert and the other person understood the question and responded in a relevant way. I see people using modal verbs like should to express wants and desires in polite ways like we should hire a band. Um, this tells me that students are learning some of the grammar that I taught in class. 
So, I mean, as a language teacher, I like this project a lot, but I'm not sure. Does it really accomplish any STEAM goals? Right. So I absolutely agree with you that it certainly has a lot of wonderful things happening in it. In terms of our criteria for strong STEAM projects, we might say that project one does include multiple opportunities for subject specific language. However, not necessarily subject specific language related to science, technology, mm, right. arts, engineering, or math. It certainly has an integration of the four skills and lots of chances to interact with the language in authentic ways. However, I don't see a specific STEAM objective. It's still a wonderful project but it might not be a project specifically geared towards STEAM. There aren't any subject matter skills that are integrated into the language project. So maybe the students on their own would look at numbers and try to do something on their own with finding a good deal, but it's not integrated into the project in and of itself. So it doesn't meet our criteria specifically for a STEAM project, Although as a language activity, it could be wonderful. Got it. Okay. I, I see what you mean here. So let's take a closer look at project two. Um, audience, again, take a moment and read these speech bubbles. This is what we imagine people might be saying while they're doing project two. So take a minute, read them. What do you see? This time, yeah, let put, us your, put your... Um, Put your observations in the chat audience. Um, tell us, what do you see happening in project two? All right, we see these speech bubbles of the students talking. What kind of things do you see here in their conversation? So Lou says they have a clear purpose. Great. Masaki says they are talking about math. Miss Lou says they're discussing prices. Great. Wonderful. What other types of things? They're talking about shopping list prices. Sunbeam says there's more about calculation. Let's see. Hey, Mar says they're doing math. Susan says they're comparing. Great. And Akiko also says math, and so does Hiroi, who says a lot of math going on here. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, everybody. Wow, thanks. Catherine, what do you see going on here? Okay, so with this project, I see people using vocabulary related to party planning, just like you did, Anne, in okay. project one. And like in your in project one, I see people using their listening and speaking skills in authentic and meaningful ways. I see things like subject verb inversion to ask questions, uh, modal verbs. As somebody in our audience said, there's comparative adjectives because they're comparing things. Mm -hmm. So it's really a language rich project. But here's what I see that is different from project one. At the same time that the students are having these meaningful conversations, they are also working on mathematical reasoning, which the teacher integrated into the project itself as they work out the best unit price for each item on their list. Ah, okay. So I see here in project two, there's still this very language rich environment that's created by the project prompt. But this time, the STEAM content is integrated right into the project. And so students are kind of channeled, right? They're prompted to engage more with math, with calculating. Interesting. So that at the same time that they're working on their language, they're working on their mathematical reasoning, which provides a really good opportunity to use language for authentic purposes. Okay. So audience, does project two meet our criteria? Yes or no? Let us know in the chat. Do you think project two is a good STEAM project? All right. Let us know, everybody. Is, does project two meet our criteria here? And let us know why as well. I see a lot of yeses coming in. Absolutely, thank you for that. Yep, we'll see a lot of yeses. I haven't seen a no yet. So I think we're on the right track that this meets our criteria. Let us know any reasons that you can think of. Let's see, Nancy says this is really interesting as integration is really an opportunity for communicative purposes, wonderful. 
Um, and the four skills are integrated. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing, everybody. Yeah, thanks. So it sounds like the audience thinks this is a really great STEAM project. What do you think, Catherine? I agree with the audience 100%. It has language focus using subject specific vocabulary, as we mentioned, the comparative suffix ER, subject verb inversion, and meaningful engagement with STEAM content, which is quantitative reasoning in this case, because they're doing calculations and trying to fit into a budget. So in this way, the focus is on both language and content, which I consider to be a winning combination. Got it. Okay. So the difference is clear to me as a language teacher, but I'm worried about some of the language teachers I work with around the world. Um, I imagine some of them might be worried that their supervisor might not see project-based learning as a kind of language instruction. Um, how can language educators convince their supervisors that PBL or project-based learning supports language learning? This question comes up a lot because at, at times supervisors might see that and think, why are we teaching math in, a, right. in an EFL class, exactly. right? Exactly. The key is to have clear language objectives along with your STEAM content objectives. The language objective has to be as important as your content objective. So for PBL to work for language education, it must have a real world content focus. And this is the key here with specific language goals appropriate to the level of your language learners. Okay, but how do language teachers go about crafting clear language goals? Like how do they write clear language objectives? So this is something that I, as a teacher, have been struggling with and working on for many years. And I like to use the following formula to write objectives when I'm doing uh, project-based learning for STEAM. I like to use the beginning students will be able to, as okay. many teachers use, yep. and then have an action that's related to the content plus the language forms necessary to achieve that action. Okay, so that sounds kind of interesting. All right, let's go back to project two. So remember in project two, it's your friend's birthday with a group, plan a surprise birthday party. Your shopping list is ready to go. Oh no, you're low on funds. You will need to look at unit prices to get the best deal on each item. Be ready to share your plan with the class. Okay, um, Catherine. Imagine I'm a teacher. What if this were my objective? Students will be able to determine the most cost-effective shopping list. Um, would this be a good objective for a STEAM project in a language class? Well, not quite. Let's take a look at what you did here. You have a pretty good STEAM focus, determining the most cost-effective shopping list. You would definitely need your mathematical reasoning skills to do that. And we've talked about just how important it is to have a strong, strong STEAM objective. So that's really great. But now let's look at the language needed to achieve the objective. They would definitely need to collaborate to accomplish this which gives them opportunities to use language for authentic purposes. But what kind of vocabulary and language forms will they need to determine the most cost-effective shopping list? For instance, what key vocabulary would they use? Are there particular ling linguistic features they need? You must be really specific about the kinds of language needed to achieve your STEAM objective. Okay, so now I'm seeing what's wrong with what I did. It, my language objective doesn't specify the language skills or forms that students would need to use to determine the most cost-effective shopping list. That's right. Remember, you want to integrate your content and your language, so the objectives really have to have both. Audience, can you use the formula 
students will be able to action plus language forms to write an objective. You can draft one on your notepad for yourself, or if you'd like, you can write it in the chat. All right, let us know everybody if you think you can go ahead and write an objective for this. And I know a lot of our audience has a lot of practice writing objectives. So how would you write this learning objective? Students will be able to action plus language form. So Hoa says she would use the word negotiate. Great. It's okay if it takes a little bit of time to think this one through. This is a really good question. We're practicing writing some good objectives that incorporate project-based learning, STEAM, and language. Let's see, Saw says, Students will be able to calculate and plan a birthday party. Great. Susan Crosby says students will be able to calculate prices to compare which is better to purchase. Students will be able to compare the price, estimate, negotiate, calculate and think critically, organize a friend's party and use comparative and superlative adjectives from Kuniko. And Chow says students will be able to comp compare prices of the products. Wonderful, thanks for sharing everybody. Wow, those are great, thanks guys. Um, while you all were writing some objectives, I wrote some too. So Catherine, what do you think of this objective? Students will be able to read project product labels and circle the unit prices of products using subject spe specific vocabulary. Uh, and that is much better than the first objective that you gave us a few slides back. So here you specified an action, which is in blue, related to one of the four skills, read. You also included another action, circle, to provide a way for students to show you that they are reading for meaning. And you specified in green that the students will be drawing on subject specific vocabulary like price and unit price to do this math work. Here's one that I wrote. What do you think of this one, Ann? Ah, so in this one, students will orally compare the unit prices of products using comparative or superlative adjectives. Okay, I like what you did here. So students will, in blue, um, compare, and you specified it would be orally compare, so I know they're speaking. That's an action, and an action related to speaking. That's good. And then you also specified in green what language forms students will use. They'll use comparative or superlative adjectives. Nice, so we have the language forms and you included a content goal. In doing some comparing, students have to use the unit price and multiplication to figure out how much each item would cost. That's great, I like that example, thank you. So Catherine, as a teacher, I really like the idea of using project-based learning for STEAM, but I know, and I've worried this myself, lots of language education, educators are concerned about asking their students to work so independently in the target language. I mean, what if they get stuck? What if they don't know what to say in English to do the project? What should language teachers do? Well, I'm glad you asked this because this is something that many language educators struggle with, um, you know, as they try to uh, work with their students. So audience, what are some strategies you use to get students to work independently in English? Hmm. Yeah, what do you think, everybody? Yeah, what do you think, everybody? How do you get students to work independently? Nor Jalima says provide structure first. That's great. So practicing with some structures in place. Provide something for the students to say in advance from Neil. Nice. So maybe sentence starters or certain vocabulary words. Provide resources. Model from Dr. A. Neela. Wordless. Great. Shining says scaffold the activity. 
give students the beginning of sentences from Soriano, provide students with the tools needed, especially vocabulary for brainstorming from Gilda. And Olga also says sentence starters and clear instruction. Wonderful, thanks everybody, great ideas. Yeah, thanks everyone, those are great ideas. Catherine, what, what do you recommend? Well, fortunately, there are a lot of different language supports that we can offer our students to help them work independently in the target language, in this case, English. Many of these have been discussed in second language acquisition research, and we use them in classrooms today. The first language support I recommend was actually brought up in our chat box, and it's called modeling. If your students are stuck and they don't know what to do, try acting out what you want to see when you put them in their independent project-based work groups. You can act it out yourself, maybe playing the role of both teacher and student, or you can invite a, a student to participate in your model. So imagine we're doing project two and we're trying to figure out how much chicken costs. We've done some research, either online or in person, depending on where we are, and taken photos of authentic product labels, like the ones you see here on the slide. As a teacher, you might model the conversation students could have as they figure out whether chicken or fish is the better deal. For instance, I can invite my wonderful student, Kate, to model with me for the rest of the class as we show them how to use comparative language to determine the most cost-effective shopping list. So here with the whole class watching, I would say something like, so Kate, we need to find out the unit price for chicken. Let's see, um, here it says 4.99 per pound. All right, so I think we now need to find out the unit price for fish. Oh, I can see it over here. It's 10.99 per pound. And then we would stop there and let the students start working on their own project after having seen us model it for the class. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Kate. So modeling is definitely a great support strategy for engaging students in PBL. So through modeling, students can hear what language forms they need to use as they do their projects. Um, and they can, kind of figure things out, right? They have a little bit of um, an idea of what they need to do. Um, but I'm wondering, do you have other suggestions? Like, what if my students need help with specific language forms? Well, that's a good question, Anne. I like to use input enhancement in these cases. It's a really good set of helpful strategies for project-based learning. Can you tell me a little more about input enhancement? I'm curious. Yeah, absolutely. So input is the information that the students are receiving from the teacher, um, often or from the materials that they're using to engage in their, proje in, in their projects. Input enhancement um, allows them to really notice language uh, forms and features that they'll need as they're working on their projects. So there are some things that you can do as a teacher. For instance, you could highlight key vocabulary in the materials, just as we highlighted unit price on our fish and chicken. We can use abundancy and redundancy strategies. Abundancy meaning you say the specific vocabulary or feature a lot, repeating it in your teacher talk often, and also giving students multimodal strategies so when you're looking at a particular word that might be subject specific, you will use visuals, you'll write it, you'll maybe post it if you're online, you'll, you'll use gestures to act out if it's something that you can act out concretely. You might even create some structured language activities such as um, some sort of worksheet or structured practice to familiarize themselves with the vocabulary or the language feature that they need to work on their project. You can even, while you're implementing the project, provide a mini lesson to address, for instance, a grammar point that's necessary to know or a suffix or prefix that they need to know. OK, 
okay, this is make, this is making sense. So input enhancement, um, if we could see the next slide, is about highlighting and reinforcing the language forms students will need to do a project. So as a language teacher, I might highlight an abbreviation in the reading like LB, which stands for pound and reminds students that LB equals pound. Um, and in my teacher talk, I might repeat key terms multiple times and in different contexts. Makes a lot of sense. Um, but in my classes, I often have students at different levels of language proficiency. Mm -hmm. What can I do to make sure that my strong students really feel challenged and my developing students have enough support? Well, having students at different levels is a very common uh, element of our language classrooms around the world. So let's ask the audience, how do you handle this? How do you practice vocabulary? Put your ideas in the chat. Yeah, let us know. How do you practice vocabulary in your classes, everybody? Let's see here. So Angela had a question, but I think it's a sort of a great comment. You, she says, can we use frames or other support when modeling? And I think that's a great point. Um, we can use sentence frames or that sort of thing to help students practice vocabulary or when we're modeling. Adenon says we can use flashcards. Let's see. Oh, and another quick question about the uh, project. How much time do you devote for these types of projects? This is from Abu Asil. Let's see. I asked synonyms. Okay, so we gather synonyms from Dr. A. Neela. Wonderful. Let's see. Match, doing a definition match exercise. Great, from Ari. Differentiating instruction, uh, focusing on root words from Susan. And CD says giving a glossary. And Fior says bingo, posters, photos, etc. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, these are really great. And yes, you can absolutely use sentence frames as well. Um, so you can also do input enhancement. It's important to remember both before and during your project work, right? So it can be implemented at any time during the stage of the project, which can last one class or can last a really long time depending on your course and what the nature of your project is. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. That's really helpful. So I have another question for you. Sure. I know a lot of teachers out there are working in places where they have 60, 70, 80 students in a class. Do you have any suggestions for how teachers can do project-based learning in large classes? Absolutely. And this brings us to another strategy, which is strategic grouping. And this is a strategy that I like a lot. When you decide to group your students in these large classes, you have lots of different choices. You can use homogeneous grouping, for instance, or heterogeneous grouping. In homogeneous grouping, all of the students in the group would be at a similar proficiency level. In a heterogeneous group scenario, the students are at different proficiency levels. And each one has advantages depending on the nature of your project. Okay, so I see. If you group the students strategically, then you can change the materials or the goals of the project depending on students' levels. So as a teacher, if I group students of the same level together, I can customize the project and the materials I give them to suit their needs. So say I have a group of really strong students. I could give them for project two, maybe a shopping list with 10 items. And if I have struggling students, their shopping list might only have five items. That way, everybody is doing the same project, but I'm kind of accommodating different levels of students. That's right. The important thing is that they're all engaging in rigorous content and language, 
but you're tailoring it to their needs. Okay. And so if I group students, say, at different levels of English proficiency, I could give each student a different job to do in the project. This way, everyone maybe would work on the same material, but each person would contribute in a way that meets their abilities. That's right. That's right. And when I think of grouping materials and jobs as three aspects of a project that you can easily manipulate in a large class to keep all students engaged, I find it really helpful with large classes, but really with any size to stay flexible. Sometimes I group my students homogeneously, while other times I group heterogeneously. This way, they get used to working with different students and different levels of materials throughout our time together. Project-based learning is great for flexibility. Hmm. Okay, so audience, if you were doing project two in your class, what supports would you use? Would you use modeling, input enhancement, project differentiation, like grouping? Put your answers in the chat, let us know. What language support strategies would you use for project two? What do you think everybody? Which of the language support strategies would you use for project two? Let's see. Some people are saying number three, project differentiation. As several people are saying all of them, of course. Um, Adenon says all of them. Each one is worth trying, wonderful. Let's see, anything else? Let me see over here. Let's see, all of them from Marjorie. Hana says all of them. Madalia says one and two. Chow says it's a great idea to demonstrate before asking students to work together. So that modeling is definitely important. Awesome, thanks everybody. Wow, so it sounds like these are all great language support strategies for project-based learning, and you can kind of mix and match depending on your teaching context. Catherine, I have another question. What about teaching in an online class? Can I do project-based learning in an online class? Well, as you know, in this day and age, this is a question that comes up a lot, right? So let's ask our audience because they are wonderful language teachers all over the world. Do you think you can use project learning, project-based learning in an online class audience? Yes or no? And if so, how would you? Yeah, please let us know your ideas. We'd love to learn from you. And if you are using or incorporating project-based learning in an online class, please let us know. I see a lot of people saying, yes, you can absolutely Erica says you can do this breakout room function, the split room function in Zoom as a way to put people in groups. Wonderful. Let's see. How would you, how would you or how do you use project-based learning in an online setting? You can divide students into those breakout rooms from Leon and um, Anu. Let's see. Great. Um, Mungi says yes. Princess says yes. Hi says yes. Teresa says I've already done so by giving very clear rules and making groups. Wonderful. There are a lot of great platforms we can use online. Absolutely from GA. Yep. Project-based learning can definitely work in an online language class. As you've all said, you can use breakout rooms um, and monitor those breakout rooms. You can even ask students sometimes to work independently using the chat box. Um, and they can put their answers in the chat as you all have. Um, you can also use your SMS or text feature on the phone if that's available to you. So there's lots of different ways to work through the various steps in their projects. Wow, that's really cool. So Catherine, can we look quickly at another project? I think we can, Anne. Let's take a look at an engineering project. In this STEAM project, students go through the engineering design process to build a smartphone holder out of everyday objects. Wow. So our question would be asking our students, 
How do we make a smartphone out of everyday objects? That would be our project. And each group would research and share design ideas to build a stable uh, smartphone holder. They would develop a procedure for building the prototype. And as you can see, we've done it using everyday objects that can be found in the classroom, usually fairly easily. And then they would work together to build the prototype, really becoming engineers themselves, to have something that they might be able to use. Wow, I love this project. My <laughs> smartphone always falls over whenever I try to prop it up on my desk. I could really use a good holder. So if I were doing this project in a language class, I would need to develop clear language objectives, right? That's really important because while a project like this is a lot of fun, you want to make sure that you have very clear language objectives so that you're making your students use subject-specific vocabulary and all of the good features that they need to engage in an engineering project. So let's imagine you're on step two. You wanna develop a procedure for building a prototype. Your language objective could be something like this. Students will be able to name the materials needed to build a smartphone stand using subject specific vocabulary. So here your action is name. We specified orally so that we know we're working on speaking skills. And your language focus is subject specific vocabulary. And in this case, it would be vocabulary related to the materials that you had available to your students to build their smartphone holder. Ah, got it. So another language objective might be students will be able to write the procedure for building the prototype using, okay, audience, this time you put in the language forms, put them in the chat. What language forms would students need to use to write the procedure for building this smartphone holder? Any ideas? Put them in the chat. Yeah, fill in the blank here on this objective based on the project. Students will be able to write the procedure for building the prototype using what? Okay, so um, words like first, second, then, the imperative form from, from Hanan. Maybe they, maybe they create a diagram using imperatives from Felisa. Language for telling steps and instructions like imperative sentences from Jiab. A lot of people saying imperative, Aisha, Miguel, Conchita, maybe using modals of advice from Hanan, using conjunctions and connectives from Takami and Kuniko. Awesome, everybody, thank you so much. Yeah, so one possible answer might be students could write the procedure for building the prototype using, it could be imperatives. Here we put verbs in the simple present, sequence words, could be modals, right? If you're giving suggestions, cool. So audience, what's next? If you were doing this project and you've written your objectives as so many of you have, the next thing you would of course want to think about are your language support strategies. And today we went over three possibilities. For this project, what language support strategies would you use? Put your answers in the chat. Yeah, it looks like Asran would use project differentiation. THPT would use number two input enhancement. Ramona would do some modeling. Great, let's see here. Aisha says she would do input en enhancement number two. Don de Guzman says number one modeling. So does Karima. And Ma Dahlia says number two. Hana says one and two. And Haimar says two and three. Awesome, wonderful, everybody. Thank you. And what's great about these different kinds of language supports is that you can really use one, two, or all of them depending on your specific circumstances. 
So if you were modeling, perhaps you would all start building one or two objects together to show them how you would like them to proceed, right? You might have input enhancement through the use of sentence frames to help students so that they can negotiate with each other on how they would like to start building their, um, their, their cell phone stand. You might provide sentence frames or sentence starters to help them write their report if they're engaging in written work. And of course, in something like this, you would most likely be using wonderful group work strategies because it's more fun when you're building something together, of course. And you could group homogeneously so that students that have more um, abilities in their language will be able to perhaps negotiate to complete something a little bit more complex. Um, or you could group heterogeneously so that each person can contribute their language strengths as needed. Wow, thanks, Catherine. This has been amazing. I feel like I've learned so much and I feel like I have a much better sense of how I would get started as a teacher with project-based learning. That's wonderful. And we have so many teachers here that I hope have learned the same thing. Um, just remember that STEAM plus project-based learning usually sets us up for a successful and engaging classroom with lots of opportunities to use language authentically and work on our content skills. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, everybody. And it's been wonderful speaking with you today. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, audience. Thanks, Catherine. This Thank has you, been Anne. a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Catherine and Anne, for sharing this wonderful expertise on using project-based learning in STEAM. I can see from the audience comments and all the thank yous that our audience really got a lot out of this. And we hope to hear from you, audience, on how you will implement these wonderful ideas in your classrooms. And of course, we'd like to thank you, our audience, for your engagement and participation today. It's always great to see your comments and ideas. Please continue to share your thoughts on social media or with your viewing groups after the session ends.